Hey everyone, this is Bathymetrics, and welcome to episode 10 of Grid School for Bitwig 3.0. Today we're going to be talking about some advanced merging tactics by using the Select, Merge, and Split modules. So if you want to review the mixing basics, go back to episode 6 of my playlist. You can find the full playlist for Grid School in a link in the video description. And as always, uh, I build upon earlier concepts and techniques that I show with each new episode. So if you haven't seen the whole series yet, I highly recommend you find this playlist and start from video one and work your way up to where we are now. Okay, so when we talked about mixing in episode six, we, we kind of left the merge, split, and select modules for later. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So... <clears throat> Most of the other modules in the mix thing just have to do with stuff you're already familiar with. You know, mixing, blending, left, right, mid, side, wideness, you know, mid versus side balance, that kind of thing. But uh, these select modules and merge modules and split modules all tend to work with logic or specific values being fed into them. So that's why we had to take a little side trip to talk about all the logic stuff in a couple of the previous episodes. So let's talk about select first, because it's the simplest to wrap our head around. We currently have a single sound generator here. We got a um, sawtooth oscillator with some things modulating it and um, it's being fed to the output, and it's the only signal we're hearing now. You can ignore these two signal chains for now. Okay. Now, let's say we have this other signal chain. which is basically the same sound, but instead of using an LFO to make it wobble, I'm using a attack decay envelope to just give the filter a quick up and down. Okay, so let's say for whatever reason in the middle of um, something, I wanna switch between this signal and this signal in the same grid instrument. I don't wanna blend them, I don't wanna mix them, I wanna actually just select between them. So that's where this select module comes into play. So let's connect the select module to the output. And let's take this second chain and connect it to the bottom connector. Let's take the top chain and connect it to the top connector. And this little yellow dot basically indicates which of these signal paths is going to be pushed out this side and routed to the output. So it's either or, not a blend, not a mix, just one or the other. And the way you control the position of this yellow dot is through some type of logic module. So the most obvious idea would be to uh, put a button here and use the button to toggle whether it's this signal chain or this signal chain. Okay, so that's the select module in a nutshell. Now you don't have to use a button, although the button's kind of cool because over here on the grid devices shortcut tab, you could create a custom uh, preset page, and then you could come in here and make a certain thing be, you know, Uh, let's just do do a label like that. So which sound do you want? And you don't have to come into the grid to do this. The grid could be closed and you could be... Okay, so button is useful, especially if you're gonna map it back out to remote controls, but there's plenty of other logic tests you could be using to decide kind of automatically whether or not you should hear this signal or this signal. And I'll leave that to you to figure out most of those use cases, but I will show, um, let's say one simple use case. Let's try clock divide. 
So we're going to bring a clock divide out here. We're going to set this to um, a value of two options. And we're going to take a clock signal from LFO. No, let's do transport. <laughs> Again, I'll be giving you more details about this transport thing later. Uh, but for now, let's just use this. And so what you see happening here is you can see it slowly changing between 0 and 1. And every time it hits 0, it's going to... Um, Let's also hook it up to the trigger. So every time it hits zero, you can see this little yellow dot flip over and become solid, which means it's true, as I talked about in the last episode about logic stuff. So what we're seeing is um, every other 16th note at this project tempo, well, it's actually every eight 16th notes, you can see that the way the transport works is here's the phase. And for the first half of the 16 bars, it's a true signal coming out. And for the second half of the 16 bars in this, I'm sorry, 16 beats in this bar, it's false. So that's what these little things are telling you. So basically for half of a bar, it's on. For the other half of a bar, it's off. Again, don't worry too much about this. The point is you can use some sort of automated trigger like this to determine whether or not it's switching between the two signals, depending on what you're doing. And let's make this more interesting. Let's take this sound and put it up here instead. So it's just automatically switching between this signal chain and this signal chain every half bar, basically. So we'll, we'll get into the transport stuff later. It's very useful, very interesting, very fun. Okay, so that's the select device. Now, the other two devices that are like select, but a little bit different, are going to be merge and split. Let's look at merge first, because it's essentially similar to select. The big difference is select is always two and only two choices. It's A or B, period. That's it. And you typically trigger select with logic. Now, the merge and split devices, you'll notice that their little input port is blue. It's not yellow. So it's not designed to be triggered with logic. Instead, it's triggered, it's designed to be triggered with um, a value, like a constant value between 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. The other thing is this type of device has more than one port in it. So I'm going to hook up all three of these devices to this. And to do that, let's get rid of this. To make this be more than just the default two ports, you have to come over here to the inspector while it's selected, and you can change the number of ports in it. You can give it up to eight ports total. Okay, so I can have as many as eight different signals coming in here and choose which of those signals to pass on to the output. Oh, and it helps if I, yeah. Choose which of these three signals to pass on to the output, and depending on a value that's being fed in here. So there's some behavior to it. It can either be kind of like a toggle between this or this or this. If this is set to the nearest interpolation, right? And if you make it a linear interpolation with this button over here, you can actually blend up to two signals. So let's see if we can demonstrate this. We're going to go to nearest interpolation first. We're going to come over here to level and grab just a, a basic level knob. Drag it all the way to zero and hook this up here. And as I turn the knob, watch what happens to the yellow dot. I get about, you know, past the first third of the range in level and it jumps from the first position to the second position. And as I keep moving up, it eventually jumps to the third position. So it's pretty much everything from here to here to here will jump us around. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to 
feed in a constant value of some sort. If I take this constant and drop it on here, when this constant value is zero, it's going to be the first dot. And as I push up these numbers, by the time it gets about there, it jumps to the second dot. And as I push up a little more, it's going to jump eventually to the third dot. So there's various ways you could be doing math on certain signals to decide whether to automatically jump between these. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll just keep using a uh, level or value knob for now. Another one you can use is value, which is just a straight percentage, right? And as you keep moving up, it's going to be one of these, and it never goes past three. If I were to expand this to four ports or five ports, then 100% would be five, four, three, two, one, okay? So you can use any type of knob that puts out a signal of, of range of values, like this value knob. And you can just use it to control these, or you can come up with another way of subdividing and, and sending a certain linear value into here. Um, let's change this back to three ports. And let's go to linear now and show you what linear does. So linear is going to as I move this value up from zero, do you see how we've got two little yellow dots now? And they're sort of dim, like it dims between the two. That's very bright. And now it starts dimming and the other one starts getting brighter. And then as I move past the midway point, this one becomes totally dim. This is fully bright. But as I keep moving up, it's going to start dimming here and increasing this one. So this is like a blend knob that's constantly interpolating and blending between any two of the input ports. So let's hear what that sounds like. This is all the way closed, so it's just this signal chain. And now I'll, I'll blend in some mix of the other two because they're very different. Okay, so super useful. This um, this this merge device is a super useful kind of hybrid cross between a mixer, like a normal mixer you're used to, versus a select, which is like a linear a binary toggle between two things. Only you can have up to eight things going in here. So that's effectively how uh, the merge works. Now the split is the same kind of idea as a merge, except the split is meant to go in the other direction. So let's just put it side by side here and I'll let you see these two side by side. I won't actually demonstrate this one because I'm sure you'll get the picture really quick, but the basic idea here is instead of several different things coming in and then you using some type of value to control what blend or which specific switch of these gets sent to the output, it's just the exact opposite. You can have one signal path coming in to this uh, splitter, and then depending on the value you feed into it, you can have the split, you can have that signal routed to uh, multiple different destinations through these output ports. And again, you can configure up to eight output ports and you have the nearest versus linear behavior for this as well. Okay, so now it's just a straight toggle between three different outputs when I'm in nearest mode. And if I go to linear, it's gonna do this slow cross-fading blend across up to two of those outputs at the same time. Okay, so that's it. Those are your advanced mixing uh, tricks. Toggle's very self-explanatory. I don't think I talked about that before, but it's basically just literally an on-off toggle. So if I were to put it in between, let's get rid of that. And let's just hook this one up straight to the output. Get rid of these two for simplicity. And let's uh, take this one and just drop it right here. So here it's just an on-off switch. Now there's no sound, now there's sound. And again, you could be using a modulator to, to toggle this. 
Uh, you could have a remote control in your uh, grid device that toggles it, and now it's active or inactive. So it's kind of like it's kind of like the button from Logic, similar, but it's not. The button only has one output, and it's just meant to toggle things on and off with data. Right? There's no input to it. Whereas this is more like an inline button that will just stop whatever signal might be flowing through it. And again, you can map it to your shortcut bar. Okay, so that's it for all the rest of the mixer modules and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.